And here we go for the starting lineup of the Cookout 400 from Richmond International Raceway for a Sunday night start. And it looks like the weather's going to be fine. I'm Greg DePama. Thanks for tuning in. We're on Prime Sports Network. You can check out our weekly previews on our motorsports channel, Mystery Caution. Right now we have, hey, we've hit the 100 subscriber mark. Baby steps, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, up until the time that we decide to move everything over to Mystery Caution, uh, we are going to stay here on Prime Snor uh, Sports Network. So please subscribe, like, and share. Do all that cool stuff because that's really going to help us out here. And we hope you enjoy what we're able to provide you uh, each week, especially when it's going to come to football season because when college football kicks off on Saturdays in a few weeks, I am going to be busy but I will be here every step of the way. I'll be taking my time off of a busy college football day to check out what's going on in NASCAR because just because football season starts does not mean that I uh, am going to check out. Um, I've been following NASCAR for 25 years. This is uh, really, I should have probably had some sort of an anniversary, but 25 years is pretty awesome. And so I'm not going anywhere. All right, let's get started. You can see the little mug on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, and depending on which way you're looking, I guess, and that's Denny Hamlin, because Denny Hamlin is the fastest. Okay, so let's check it out. I'm not surprised, really, I guess, for one uh, respect, uh, considering, of course, you have a Toyota not only winning the pole, but also, look at that. Oh, I got it would be nice if I actually popped it up on the screen. But look at that. Martin Tricks Jr., the teammate, will be on the front row. And not... Not a surprise, based on what we talked about the other day. And again, you can catch all of our weekly preview shows on Mystery Caution. Normally, we record on Tuesdays. Sometimes we have to postpone on Wednesday or Thursday. Matter of fact, CJ, had, I don't know if you heard about those really bad storms. Not from uh, the hurricane, but uh, there was a big storm in Cleveland, uh, in the Cleveland area, uh, middle of the week, or actually it was on Tuesday evening. And CJ had his electric go out, so... Uh, we weren't able to record until Wednesday, so uh, I guess better late than never. We got it up there, and that's what we do each and every week over on Mystery Caution. Here, I'm going to update you what's going on. So, uh, as we do here every week, let's take a look at uh, what else we find regarding Toyota drivers, and that's the fact that they had five of the top ten in the front row. Uh, they've got Josh Berry, Chase Elliott. There's Christopher Bell. Now, that's my pick. Uh, Bell, uh, matter of fact, my heavy pick. I really like Bell. And um, CJ is going with Hamlin. Those were our picks earlier in the week. Uh, so we're looking pretty good. But this is, again, no big surprise. Uh, and then there you got Bubba at 8 and Redick at 10. So those are the Toyota drivers in the top 10. And is this important? No. All right. Now, you might say, well, yeah, but they were really good. They got a really good track record. They're, I mean, just take a look at... I mean, they were the favorites coming in. Hamlin, Truex, Bell. So now how are you going to beat them? Doesn't this mean... Well, uh, like for instance, Denny Hamlin, when he won earlier this year, qualified 11th, and his practice speed was ranked 23rd. So on one hand, you might go, well, if they were 11th. If Hamlin was 11th and 23rd and won, just imagine what's going to happen now when he qualifies first. I don't look at it that way at all. Uh, so I just think what this means is, is all right, these guys look fast. Uh, it's not good for the odds, uh, which is uh, hopefully you took advantage of it uh, the other day. Uh, and, and I did. I mean, I went ahead and I put my big money on Christopher Bell already. I don't know if the odds are going to drop all that much because all these guys are pretty stacked up now. So uh, I think maybe the, the one driver out of the top that is going to end up in the worst shape or maybe in the best shape, odds-wise, is Kyle Larson. And that's exactly who we kind of thought uh, was going to be the one that was going to uh, have the biggest issues based on the fact that, and we'll get into it again in just a little bit, Chevy at Richmond, not all that great. Chevy, matter of fact, history-wise, uh, as we said the other day, just take a look at uh, even just the recent history. Ten of the last... No, actually, actually for Chevy... Even though they did win a few years ago, because uh, all, all three manufacturers have won in the, in the last three years, but Chevy has just one win in the last six and two in the last 12. So that's pretty weak. 
And the two tracks that are the most similar to Richmond, you got New Hampshire, Chevy just one uh, top six this year at New Hampshire, and one top 12 at Phoenix. That's pretty bad. So Chevy, uh, so again, that's why looking at Larson, and boy, we're going to get into the practice speeds from Hendrick because it's not pretty. So uh, this is just reaffirms the not only the Gibbs team, but also Toyota in general. And this is also, again, odds-wise, I, I, I wonder if it's really going to affect it too much because they're all in the top five and they're all looking good. As far I think they're all going to look good regarding uh, Vegas. Hamlin, Truex, Bell were all right around 5-1 to one when we did the show on Wednesday. Actually, I know the odds fluctuated in that 24-hour period. Um I don't remember what it was at the time, but we even pointed it out that if we would have recorded the show on Tuesday like we normally do, uh, the odds would have been a little bit different. It's amazing how just, you know, 12 hours, uh, how everything changed because we did it early in the morning on two, on Wednesday. Anyway, the fact is, is that uh, I, I see it coming down a little bit, especially because Larson's now out, I think. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be 12 to 1. Even though, you know, it's, I guess it's kind of possible. You never know. Uh, but it doesn't look good for Chevy. So maybe Larson's 8-1. to one? I don't know. 10-1? to one? I, guess it's, I guess it could be. That would open it up for those other three drivers, Hamlin, Truex, and Bell, for their odds to slip. So maybe now you have Hamlin at, I don't know, 350, Truex at 450, and Bell at 5. You know, so they will come down like a point and a half or two, and that could very well happen. But this is the tough part because you have to pick one of them. All right, so this that's why it's really tough because you're gonna have three. And, it's, and, and this is why we're gonna try to do our best to, to let you know which one that uh, you should go with. But look, the fact is that all three of them are capable. It's gonna be left in your own individual hands, and uh, all I can do is just give you the, the, the most information. You can guys can obviously uh, do uh, what you can do to try to make yourself some money and win in fantasy. All right, so let's get through this. So we talked about Toyota. Now there's the first Chevy, Josh Berry. Now, remember, we talked about Berry the other day because Berry looks really good at Richmond. He, he, he was second in this race last year. I don't know if you remember that. So that that's huge. And he started 30th, okay? He also started 30th in March when he finished 11th. So he's now starting third. That's, to me, that's a bigger difference than what I started off, you know, comparing Hamlin's March results to these results and what it could do impact-wise. Yeah, so I think that's good. I remember, Berry, see, this was one of those things I was talking about. Berry was 40 to 1. So if we did the show on Tuesday, I would have talked, we would have said Josh Barry, 40 to 1, that's the number. And I jumped all over it. I mean, I, I put a few bucks on Barry at 40 to 1. He was 25 to 1 when we did the show on Tuesday morning. Now, oh, oh, oh and, and here's another reason Xfinity at Richmond, four races, three top fives, and his best race was last March. Okay. And that was last year, last March, when he was third. And led 63 laps, I believe, in that race. So, yes, uh, Josh Berry, I believe he led 63 in that race. Anyway, fact is, he's really good at Richmond. And now he's third. So he went from 40 to 25. He might go down to 15. I think it's very possible. So I hope you, you hope you were able to take him the other day. And that's why uh, I know we get a lot of traffic on this particular video each week. And, and not... Anything compared, I mean, it's much better from what we do on Tuesdays. Um, all I can tell you is, I mean, if you want and you don't want to watch the whole show and it's, you know what, I just don't have the time and it's an hour show, whatever it is, here's here's a little tip. If you just want to find out what we picked, okay, just go towards the end because we always give our picks at the end of the video. So if you if you just don't have the time and you want to know what our picks are, you can do that. That's, that's And again, that's just up to you. Picks, if, if, if the picks matter to you as much. But just pointing out why we would make a pick based on the player's odds, the driver's odds, uh, that kind of thing. Or uh, you could take a look and kind of fast forward because we'll show you the screen of the odds on, draft, on DraftKings. 
So you can just kind of fast forward those odds and you know see what see what what, what we like there, and then turn around and go ahead and uh, uh, make your own decision. So yeah, check it out. I think it's you know it's worth your while if you have the time. We go in depth on all of these drivers, and and I really think it's worth it if you're if you're big into NASCAR gambling and and fantasy. I really do. Okay, so. There's Berry now, and then we have his, um, that's Ford, okay? Now you got Busher at Ford, Logano at Ford, and by the way, Blaney was not in the top 10, but there he is at 11, okay? So Ford, even though they did not, even though they don't have a great history here either, because Toyota is really the, the, the manufacturer that is uh, numero uno, uh, if, if Ford's okay. I mean, they've had an okay history. Definitely better than Chevy's. Okay, so... Uh, as far as those other Fords, uh, Busher, Logano, and Blaney, all right, uh, the ones that we uh, liked, actually, uh, Busher was the one that stood out. Uh, if you take a look at it, uh, he's, because look, he's the defending champ, and he was 18 to 1. So it was the defending champ, 18 to 1. And not only did he win and lead 88 laps, but he was also ninth in March, and he has another top five. Out of five next gen results, okay. So uh, he's looked good here. Second at Phoenix and fifth at New Hampshire, and now he is going to be starting in the top ten. There's Busher starting seventh, and you know what? Uh, I think he's going to be in a pretty decent. Um, I think he's going to. I think he's going to be in good shape as far as the odds. You know, maybe he's ten to one, twelve to one, and and I still think that that's pretty good for Chris Busher. And then you have Logano. And his teammate. And look, Blaney, no way we were going to take him at 10 to 1. Then on, my, on Wednesday morning, it had gone up to 14 to 1, which is better. Uh, I still think it's going to go up now because uh, no top 10 qualifying, uh, slow practice speed, and he doesn't have a great history at the track. We know how hot he is, but uh, I don't think you're going to get good enough odds. What, what, what do I classify as good enough? If you can get Ryan Blaney, at 16, 18, 20 to 1, absolutely put him in your long shots. Uh, no question. He's, he's just that hot and that good right now. But I just don't think he's a bargain at 14 to 1 even. Logano had to make it a switch. He was 14 to 1 and moved up to, I think, 12 or 10 to 1 in that range. So I think now here he probably stays, though. I don't, I don't think he's going to move up all that much, uh, especially because he wasn't all that fast in practice. But uh, he has a, a good history. He was second, as I mentioned. He was second in March. He's got a couple of wins. And he's been very hot here. Well, I shouldn't say hot because uh, I'm talking about 20 races. But if you just look at his last 20 races, those were, you know, you could just eliminate the first 10. Not very good. Last 20, excellent. And he's also having one of those alternating I'm good and I'm weak and I'm good and I'm weak kind of deals. So if you follow that, if you believe in those trends at all, then Logano is in good shape. So uh, I think you're probably going to get pretty good odds on both Logano and Busher, and I definitely think that they're in play. Uh, now let's move on to uh, – let's talk about the Chevys. All right, so here it is, and then we're going to get into practice speeds, and I'm going to run through the rest of these. So you got Elliott and Austin Dillon. I mean, where'd that come from? That's it. Those are your two Chevys in the top ten. All right, and here's Kyle Busch. So – Richard Childress with Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon. This has been the best Saturday they've had all year. How about that? Uh, what is that going to do as far as handicapping the race? Uh, I don't think it's going to do much. Because Austin Dillon has one top five in 20 races at Richmond. So I'm not going to get too excited about that. But what should excite you is not necessarily that he qualified sixth. But... Yes, Austin Dillon. Yes, I'm, I'm going to do it. Look at this. Yes, Austin Dillon was the fastest in practice. Wow. Where did that come from? So how about that? So Austin Dillon and Kyle Busch, some good signs for him, especially odds-wise. Look, forget about Austin Dillon. He ain't winning nothing. Um, and I believe, what was his odds? His odds, he was 150 to 1. So here's the deal. He's probably going to be now, I don't know, 40 to 1, I would guess. 
Uh, it's just a way Vegas is just going to completely annihilate those odds. If you can still get Austin Dillon at, I don't know. It's got to be more than that. I don't know. I'm, I'm not even willing at 40 to 1. I still need 70, 80 to 1 in Austin. If I'm getting that, I'll throw a buck on him. I mean, if you want to throw a buck on him at 40 to 1, I'm not going to talk you out of that. That's for sure. But uh, I, I remember, he's 150 to 1. So you lose all value. If you wind up going into 40, 30 to 1, and that's just, again, remember, qualifying and practice does not matter here. And if you want to you want to know why, okay, so here it is. Here's the information. 10 of the last 12 winners at Richmond started outside the top 7. 7 of the last 12 started outside the top 10. All right, so that's huge. So as much as as we were starting off with Hamlin, as much as it's great that even though he fit that trend in March, starting 11th and winning, he's on the pole now. I don't. I'm telling you, I just don't look at that as a plus because your odds now, if you if you were waiting for qualifying and now you're gonna bet, I think it's a negative. You should lose even more value, especially again with Larson out of the picture now. I believe maybe you get lucky. Maybe it winds up being Hamlin 5, Turex 5, and Bell 5. But I, I just, um, either way, I, th- I think you're going to lose a little bit of value. And, again, it doesn't really matter. It just doesn't. So that's what I'm going to look at with Austin Dillon. Why should I, you know, it just doesn't matter. And for Kyle, I, I guess I could say the same thing, especially because he, qual- he, he practiced 20th. So, uh, of course, Kyle has a great history here, though. Uh, he was 33 to 1, six wins, even though he has not won since he swept in 2018. By the way, he has led just two laps since he switched to the next gen. So I still would stay away. I, I just, you got to stay away from those guys right now. All right, now let's run through the rest of the field. So there's the top 12, now there's Byron, and there's Larson. Okay. And I, I want to stick with Hendrick right now. And then there's Bowman. Okay, 17. Now, let's take a look at practice for Hendrick. Okay. All right, there's Dylan up top. I mean, Zane Smith. If this doesn't prove right here that qualifying and practice doesn't really matter at Richmond, I don't know what does. Okay, so, I mean, even this. Look, McDowell, Suarez. All right. Hendrick. Where's Hendrick? Hendrick? Hendrick, anybody? Hendrick. Uh, HMS? Hendrick? No. Alex Bowman is the fastest in practice for Hendrick. Alex Bowman, 27th. Wow, look who's faster than Chevy. Hemrick, Ty Dillon. Oh my lord. Kyle Larson, 32nd. Just Barry. Barry went from 3rd to 33rd. By the way, Barry's a Ford, though. And there's Byron and Elliott, 35th and 36th. I don't know what happened. I don't know. Okay? But it's not good. And I told you the Chevy stats before. And so now you throw in the Chevy stats with those stats, and it's not looking good, not only for Hendrick, but for Chevy. Okay, so let's run through the rest of the field here in, in, in qualifying. And here's another Toyota, Gibbs. I mean, Gibbs is just not, you know, as a rookie, and he's never, I mean, a secondary driver who's never won before in the Cup. It's just getting to the point where I just can't take him unless he gets on a roll again. Uh, but because Toyota is really hot right now, as far as Richmond, as far as uh, what they went through today, he was third at Phoenix. He did win. One of the two races he ran in the Xfinity Series, that was in 2022. So, I mean, yeah, I, I can say that Gibbs would be a nice long shot. He was 20 to 1 on Wednesday, or in that number, in that range. If I'm still getting 20 to 1 in that range, I can see him not being a bad long shot play. But it, I don't, I, it shouldn't drop anything less than that. If he's 14 to 1, 12 to 1, 10 to 1, that's no bargain. Okay. 
And uh, there's Ross Chastain. What is going on with Ross Chastain? That was a big miss on my behalf. I mean, I'm hoping I hit a home run with Christopher Bell uh, as my pick to win the championship this year. But Ross, I believe he was my, I don't know if he was my official sleeper, but he was definitely one of the picks that I had to win the championship. I put money on Chastain. Of course, I put money on Blaney. Um, but to, to, outside of my bias with Blaney, uh, and there was no bias last year, you know, that was, uh, that, that, I had picked Blaney for like three straight years because I really believed that he's a championship driver and he was getting good odds just like Chase. I always felt, I still believe, that Ryan Blaney is just as talented as Chase Elliott and yet the two would look like, you know, Elliott's, at, you know, at one end of the spectrum and Blaney was at another. And anyway, I knew eventually Blaney would equal what Chase did and he did. But, um, so and, and I do, did not believe, well, nor do I believe, he's going to win back-to-back championships. But um, fact is, is you know, I was obviously going to put money in, uh, money on him as one of my as my favorite driver. But the others uh, were, uh, well, one of them was Chastain. So really disappointed, really, in the season he's having. And uh, we didn't like him on on Wednesday. We definitely don't like him. Once again, something's got to go. Something's got to click. I don't know when it's going to be, but they got to get something going there. Brad Kozlowski, what is he doing with 29th? This is a big surprise. And by the way, his practice speed wasn't much better. So Kozlowski, this, yeah, when we were going over the teammates, we talked about how uh, they, it, they both had nice uh, uh, you know, portfolios at Richmond. I, I went over Bushers. Keeping in mind, Kozlowski's got two wins back in his Penske days. Four Xfinity Series wins at the track. But we also talked about no top fives since his 2020 win okay, at Richmond. And no top fives in his last seven on the season. okay. Uh, we did, though, like the fact that not only has Busher looked good lately, but Kozlowski fourth at Phoenix and led 102 laps in this race last year. But he started sixth in that race. And his teammate won. Okay, so yeah, but forget it now. He's looking really off. He'll he'll take Busher's notes. I'm sure that'll help him. It is Richmond. Okay, so I will say this: he was 20 to one in that range on Wednesday. The fact that he's getting Busher's notes, if it, I think you're gonna get good odds on Kozlowski, like 30 to one ish, you know. So you're not getting anything worse than 20 to one. But I deserve better than 20 to one after this. So if I get 25, 35 to 1 in that, in that range, yeah, why not? Maybe I, maybe I throw a couple of bucks on Kozlowski. Try to take advantage of, of the Richmond history. And that's it as far as the trends, stats uh, of not having to qualify in the top 10. That's it for qualifying. All right, practice. Let's go through it. I did pretty much do it before when I was going over the Chevy drivers. But let's just uh, kind of point out some that I think are the most interesting. There's Chastain. Yes, a little bit better, but still not good enough for me. Logano, disappointing 18th after starting in the top 10. Also disappointing to see Kyle go backwards. There's Reddick. Now, Reddick's important. I haven't talked about Reddick. Reddick is my second pick from Tuesday. Uh, CJ's second pick, by the way, was Joey Logano. And uh, what I liked about Reddick was obviously one of the fact that he's just red hot. And we do have to wonder whether or not, you know, it's like the all-star break in uh, sports. Uh, well, in baseball, uh, you could say hockey, basketball, what happens when you come back from the break? Are you as hot? Are you as cold? Well, that's what we're going to find out here with the two-week, you know, uh, vacation. And if the, if the drivers who were hot stay hot and vice versa, Reddick was one of them. He was the hottest driver in the series to not win. Eight top tens out of nine. Um, five of those top fives, two of those runner-ups in his last three races, and his best finish at Richmond was this year. When he finished 10th, he led 81 laps. He never led a lap ever at Richmond in his previous seven races. Okay? And uh, last year, he started this race from the pole. Okay, so his last two experiences at Richmond, his best two experiences in the Cup Series at Richmond, He's red hot, 6th at New Hampshire, 10th at Phoenix, combined 121 lead. Problem is, just one problem, really, just one, and that is this practice speed of 21st. Okay, you qualify 10th, that's cool. He's in the top 10. Don't really care that he's in the top 10, remember? So he's 10th, that's fine, don't really care. 
practices I'm a little bit concerned with, but remember, okay, last year, Denny Hamlin won from qualifying 11th and practicing 23rd. What is Reddick? 10th and 21st. Pretty similar. So I this is one of those things that we talked about the other day that we wanted. We wanted to see one of the drivers we liked not necessarily like qualify in this spot, you know, 8th to 14th, 8th to 15th, and then you practice, uh, you know, something okay, though. We want a better practice. I, I ain't going to fool you there. But still, we're okay. It doesn't matter. Okay? Hamlin, third, 23rd practice this year. It doesn't matter. So this is what we want to see for, for a driver like Reddick. This is, like, if I'm looking at it right now, going down the list, I would say Reddick is number one regarding value that I'm expecting to get when the odds pop out based on a driver that we liked, based on a driver I already picked. Okay, because when we picked him, he was about 12 to 1. And I cannot imagine that the odds are going to be anything less than 10 to 1. So you're going to get good odds on Reddick. And he's, he's driving a Toyota. Okay, so I, I think this is the way to go. Uh, still, a uh, Bell and Reddick, my two picks. That's still the way to go. Uh, all right, so let's just uh, go through the rest. Blaney, disappointing 25th. There's Bowman and the rest of those uh, turkeys from <laughs> Hendrick. Yeah, what was up with uh, Barry, man? Wow, that was a little nuts seeing Barry go from 3rd to 33rd. All right, so there you go. Again, uh, Toyota, 5 of the top 10 and in the, in, in, in the front row at qualifying. Uh, practice, Toyota, 3 of the top 4. Chevy, three of the top six plus the top driver, Austin Dillon. As far as which drivers had the best combined qualifying and practice, that would be Martin Truex Jr., okay, second and fourth. Then you have Chase Bell, excuse me, Christopher Bell, fifth and third. Then you have Austin Dillon, sixth and first. Bubba Wallace, eighth and second. We're going to get to him in a second. We're not done. Busher. Seventh and seventh. And that would be it. Th those are your so you got five. Truex. Well, Hamlin's in there because even though he's not in the top ten in practice, he's eleventh. So you got Hamlin, Truex, Bell, Dylan, Busher, Wallace. Those were the top six combined practice and qualifying drivers. Now we talked about just briefly, and again, you want to know what we said in depth. Regarding the top three, Hamlin, Truex, and Bell, check out. We got a link in the description. Check it out. As far as our show, we, we went in depth on everything you want to know about Hamlin's history, Truex's history, and Bell's history, and why I decided to go with Bell and why CJ decided to go with Hamlin. Keeping in mind that Martin Truex dominated in March, should have won in March. The only reason he did not win in March, the only reason was because Bubba Wallace decided to get pretty with Kyle Larson, bring out a caution just before the white flag, and that was it. It was it, it, it screwed Truex. He lost the race after leading 228 laps, finished fourth, and um, and and so it's not a surprise that he's looking really strong right now. Matter of fact, it, you know he could end up as the favorite. Based on, because I believe he was like the small favorite on Wednesday. I think it was Truex, Hamlin, and then Bell and Larson. So I think Truex might still end up the favorite, even though Denny Hamlin is having a much better season than Truex, and he won the race. I am still thinking Truex might end up as the favorite. So it'll be interesting. I, I say right now, um, I probably would take Truex over Hamlin right now. I would. So that's that's the way I would go. But it's still for me, Bell, because he hasn't won yet. He's overdue to win. You know, three Xfinity Series wins out of five. I went through all the other reasons. You could check out the video of why I like Christopher Bell here. And he's done nothing to change my mind. But Truex would be my second place. And, um, you know, go from there and uh, pick away because it's uh, it's not going to be easy to pick one of those three drivers best of luck and Kyle Larson even though he has two wins uh, you know you see how slow these guys are he was and look remember he was on the pole in March he's on the pole in March led 144 laps and still didn't win the race 
Okay, so I look at it actually, if you want to look at the, what we talked about with Hamlin and how much better of a situation he's in and all that stuff, well, I, I don't really think of it, you know, to me, I don't, I don't, that wasn't something that I really put stock in, but this I would because Larson is going the opposite way. That, I think, makes... Now, again, if you it, all of a sudden, if Larson's odds appeal to you, maybe you get 10 to 1, maybe you get 12 to 1. That's completely up to you. But again, remember, remember Chevy's history and all that. Remember how the entire team looks. I just don't think it's one of those weeks to take Kyle Larson. I'd still rather take Kyle Larson when I'm going to take him a few times a year. I'd still rather roll the dice when I, when I think he's looking pretty good in practice and qualifying and all that. He's just not the type of driver that looks slow, uh, you know, on Saturday and then just explodes on Sunday. Not saying he can't do it and he has done it, but he's just that's just not usually his mo. Okay, so Wallace, uh, I think he's the last one to talk about, and uh, Bubba. Uh, we went into why. By the way, Bubba was CJ's third pick, his long shot pick. Mine was Barry. So uh, Bubba. Uh, the reason why we both liked Bubba was because of the fact that if you look at it, in his la- he's, he's, he's another one of these drivers that's pretty hot coming into the break. Uh, probably his hottest time of the year. Uh, all in the top 13, three top 10s, one top 5. So he's, he's, he's doing pretty good coming in. In his last Xfinity Series race, that was his. I think it was his best finish ever. It was back in 2017, but the point is it was his best. And... He had an average of 11.7 finish in, uh, I think, in six starts at Richmond and Xfinity Series, which is pretty good for Bubba Wallace. Also, first eight in Cup, average 25.1. Last four, average 15. So he's clearly doing much better at Richmond over his last few trips there, including Next Gen. Of course, that that's it. That's you got to throw that in there. And he led 80 laps in this race last year. He's only led 83 ever in the 11 previous races. So he was 33 to 1. You're going to lose that now, though. So, how would I would be okay with it's got to be 15 or better. Anything under that, and I just think you're losing way too much value. But if you can still get 15, 20 to 1 in that range, I still think it's a pretty good uh, long shot play. Okay, that is going to wrap it up. Uh, let us know what you think. Comments, we appreciate them. Questions, you have those. Let me know what's on your mind. We really uh, uh, like the interaction. It's a lot of fun. And we are going to be back again, it looks like, on Tuesday. I don't see any reason unless there's another storm. Uh, and then uh, Tuesday, we'll be talking about Michigan. We're in the home stretch, boys, because after Michigan, Daytona. Can't wait, right? Saturday night. Daytona coming up in a couple of weeks. First, it's Michigan. Actually, first, it's Richmond on Sunday night. I still have no idea why we're waiting until Sunday night, but we are. So do your best, and hopefully they entertain us enough uh, to keep us awake and we don't have to worry about getting up first thing in the morning and watching, especially because this is danger territory. Just just try to realize, because I am, that if you have to record NASCAR races now, you have to know what their alternate channel is and make sure that that's recording too. Because if they do the old switcheroo, oh, t- time's up. we got to switch over to the next uh, channel. Sorry. Well, just make sure you're prepared. So, because uh, <laughs> especially tomorrow night, you might might do it. You might uh, not want to stay up and watch a race when you got to get up early on Monday. Anyway, great luck to everybody out there watching the race. I hope uh, I have given you what you need to do to prepare for it, and we'll see you next time.